issue that um, uh, Dr. 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 Dewey raised. Um, he mentioned the idea of Ubuntu, uh, which is a very strong uh, idea. Um, it's, uh, uh, it, it brings, it, it addresses meta language itself. How do you begin to discuss African um, in ways that are African? But because we, we either jettison the concept of African art itself, or we have to find some metal language to describe it that is African. If we say there is no African art, then we can probably begin to use other metal languages to address it. But if we say there is African art, then why can't we begin to develop an African metal language? That's my question. Should we call him for another conference? <laughs> <laughs> okay, there's a question here. There's another question here. It's actually just a comment. Okay, comment. A question. Yes. Because it was actually an issue that I thought this panel brought up. The, uh, and of course, it, it, it's the life of uh, Lele Jäger is at the center. Because it brought up this example of uh, what, how they call it, the French call it, the Picolet, or the, uh, the artist, art historian, mm -hmm. and, and all of these things embodied in one person. Right. Or bridging, let us they call it, art and, and, and uh, practice and, uh, and theory, or, or theory and practice. But one thing to think about in the model that uh, Sylvester uh, uh, actually co-grounded here is the idea of the model of the art historian and artist, mm -hmm. is to think about the absence of art history as a discipline in, in, in many African universities, or even in, uh, in what exists actually is a typical, as I experienced it, in a similar college. Uh, typical of the Sudan Nigeria relationship being colonized by the same uh, British colonial system is that art education was a model, you know, according to you know late 19th century, late 20th century British, British education, in which there was an emphasis, uh, emphasis, especially by British expatriates, on the uh, uh, bringing in the crafts into the classroom. But it was also, if there was an, uh, you know, a discipline of art history that was taught, it was mostly European modern art. Mm -hmm. Or, art, I mean, a typical art history text that exists. That's what we have seen in, in the context of Sudan. Not sure about Nigeria. It wasn't. But I, hmm? it, wasn't it wasn't in Nigeria. Nigeria. It no. wasn't? No. It is not. Okay. So, but, but out of that, what I really wanted to really bring around is that I thought perhaps we should think about this model in a different way. Which is to say, is that it, it came out of the necessity of the lack of, 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 of documentation and, and of an art history that speaks to the history of African artists themselves. That is, many people are forced, because that model, you can actually just transpose it into African American. Mm -hmm. Think about the early African American art historians. Mm -hmm. David Driscoll, mm -hmm. an artist. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 Rick Jeff, Powell, James who started as an artist. Mm -hmm. Even in their training, mm -hmm. uh, Jeff Donaldson, mm -hmm. as an artist. I mean, it's just. Not a single, I mean, except maybe lately that some of the, uh, some of the African American art historians came out of typical artists in public. Mm -hmm. But really, there are people who really invented themselves as an art historian, as art historian. Mm -hmm. He started the training. Like that. So I think it, 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 it just it speaks to something else other than uh, uh, that's something just unique to Nigeria. Sudan is the same. I mean, in my interaction with Israelis. I have a quick response. I, I was at the, the, uh, the University of Nigeria when we graduated the first person who got a BA in art history. Mm -hmm. Although graduated the first, um, I was majoring in studio painting. I remember this because people, his, his, his uh, classroom, his, he, he had a whole room to himself. <laughs> and so people used to come and, and stare at him uh, in, in that room, which was really very annoying. But, but can you just tell me about the, this, about the uh, syllabus? That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Um, it, that's, that's what was unique about the Soka program. Mm -hmm. they, what you're talking about in colonial syllabus was the history of Western and Oriental art. Mm -hmm. We had somebody who taught that. Mm -hmm. But although I did taught you know, history of, of, of African art, from an Af African-centric perspective. Chike Anyako taught the history of traditional art as a vital component of contemporary practice. Mm -hmm. um, and you had Eranachi, you had Oloidi. It was, you know, an, an outside the department, in, in the wider humanities department, you had Chino Achebe, you know. You had, there was a real significant concentration of scholars in, in Nsuka who were breaking down, they, they were discarding this British curriculum completely 
and try to work out you know, a different curriculum. So, uh, which I'll get to yeah. So th this, this, this went hand in hand with, with the formation of new syllabi, uh, with the development of journals to promote new ways. Okay, okay you know, but you know, I was part of that. Um, so all these all this were things that, that were there. And by the time we were graduating in 1988, uh, the idea that, you know, uh, your, your art history started in first year. You started taking art history classes in first year, along with your drawing and painting. And you did that up to your graduation. We wrote dissertations and, and you know, all those other things. So I think um, it's, it's developing now. I, I, I made that point in my, in, my, in my article, that I don't know if any school in Nigeria has an independent art history program. But I do believe that there is a greater emphasis on art history within the undergraduate education than there was. The master's program is almost, you know, completely art history. All the master's programs. Do we still have a few minutes? There's a question. I wanted to just add to what you just said because I had a question when you mentioned the Nsuka school. I think you said something about Igbo, but you just mentioned Elena Tsui, who's of course Ghanaian. I think. So just to, you know, I, I think to remind everyone that the Nsuka school, of course, was not just Igbo uh, yeah. uh, painters. and Nsuka Essien, I think, was affiliated or... Nsuka was there. School, I, I've, I've, I've written about that in some detail. The school had uh, oh. foreigners involved in it. So. Mm -hmm. well, it, it would just be a very provocative response to Professor Yu. Um, okay, did this uh, persistent question. Um, the, the issue he's been raising, perhaps, for art is new, but it's not new in the academy. Philosophers in the 70s, has, um, they, discuss, they discuss this issue with respect to the existence of African philosophy. And when you come to literature, it's also been discussed with respect to who represents Africa and who talks about Africa. And you find out that most of these people who are outside of the continent are reminiscing about their experiences in the continent, basically playing to the Western world. But then if you look at it in practical reality, other than for academic exegesis, which is quite interesting and amusing to all of us because it's the way we live, education as it is, is foreign to us. We never had it in this way in Africa. Western education. Western, formal education. Formal, Western formal education. So when you're talking of art history, we don't have it in that setup. So essentially, we, we, we will have to practice it in the language of those who brought it in the way they and then, but if you're now going to look at the two discourses, Africa and West, you have parallel developments such that those who are in Africa are doing something unique and different. And those of us who are here who want to marry both, who want to represent Africa to the Western world, we have to use the language of the Western world. I was criticizing Professor Palola's use of race in his latest book because I doubt that there is any African language that makes it use of the concept of race. Now, we have origin, we have several ways to describe ourselves, but race is not indigenous to Africa. But when you're going to write in the Western world, one of the ways to show that you've been assimilated, and one of the ways to carry your message across will be to use the language of the Western world. So I'm saying then that there is a dichotomy here. If you're playing the Western game, you have to play it in their language. And if you're going to play that in Africa, then you have to play the way it is done in Africa, perhaps. It, 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 is, the, it is the word you have to, it is the phrase you have to. Okay. That is very important. All right, all right. Wait, 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 wait. Five, 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 I think you can make your choice where you, want, where, where you want to go and how you want to do it. I don't think you can legislate that. And, and let me speak from that part perspective of cultural studies, uh, because we're asking about the curriculum for the art, for art history. Uh, it, it's, it's disturbing for me that the University of Lagos that had the Center for Cultural Studies, uh, I will not say evolved, or just melted that, that concept and became a department of creative arts. Uh, which is a, a very a Western mindset versus the, the vortex that it used to be where you had all this uh, production from the artists. And they were all bleeding one into the other. And so we can, in, in my field, we use 
uh, the language uh, of Africa without uh, apologizing for it, because literature tra travels, whether it is written text or oral, it, it travels. And performance is, is a lived experience. So you, I cannot put uh, the isms into the body of a black actor, for example. And, and so what, what he's asking for, and what Professor KDG was talking about, is, is happening in other fields, but maybe not as much in, in art history. I, I don't know. But you will not legislate that I use uh, one versus the other. I, I am free to do that. And I'm, I believe that the concept of race exists in, 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 in African culture. Um, if you go search, you might not find the word race used you know, for it because that's English, but you find the concept in existence. Uh, yeah. No, 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 it's impossible to talk about what really <coughs> that African meta language that we're looking for is. But for me, it's not way or the other. Issues are really complex. And the absence of a, a word for a concept doesn't mean that the absence of a concept mm -hmm. exists. Exactly. So that's very important to remember. Mm -hmm. But I just will end with an anecdote so. that has implications on the issue of language. And it is, I don't know if it's a legend, a myth, or whatever you call it, but there was a conference in which during the debate about language, when when uh, Gugi Watiengo decided to only deliver paper right on the paper. <laughs> 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 deliver the paper and keep you in a conference that is actually had a, it's an international African one. And the story is that, is that in Zamani, who was a very well known South African boy, stood up and asked him a question. Let's say in Zulu, assuming that's where he spoke. The question in a much more complex way. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, on that note, let me oh, oh, no, let me turn. Oh, you want yeah, to ask well, a question? Yes, yeah, I have a comment. Well, I just yeah. needed to add to the entire discussion that uh, the issue here is uh, from the color. Well, we, we, we're talking about two <laughs> two different things here. We have to separate contextualizing art from interpreting art. Mm -hmm. Now, in the, in the case of uh, the definition of modernism that we have been you know, deliberating on here, and uh, to the issue of having to uh, invent an African language for the studying of African art, I have a problem with that because um, if we are studying visual art, then, of course, we cannot ignore the, the issue of interpretation. Now, interpretation in itself is purely subjective. And so in soliciting for a special African language to be able to engage in interpreting African art, it's flawed, in my view, because the very concept of interpretation is purely subjective. Any person can decide to interpret art from his or her own different perspective altogether. So trying to limit or trying to actually invent a special language for the interpretation of African art does, doesn't really um, augur well in contemporary you know, um, academic circles in the sense that the interpretation does not take away from the art itself. So that's what I mean by contextualizing art. If in fact African art is already in its context, there is, I see no reason why anybody because once an art piece, a visual art is produced, it then becomes the, the property of the public. The artist doesn't own the art anymore. That's and then because it is that because, <laughs> it's public, because it's public, then every single person that encounters that work of art has every reason to interpret that art from his or her different perspective. Mm -hmm. It's about and so power. It's about power. Language is power. And yeah, language is so the context. Words. The context should be separated from interpretation. There's a difference between those who consume the art and those who interpret the art. Yeah, but I'm saying in, in, in teaching African art, the idea is in teaching African art, we also have to expect that some of the teachers of the African art are not Africans. 
And so uh, there, there is a tendency of interpreting the work of art purely from the perspective of the, the teacher. I say a way. And that's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Uh, good you walk out, when you walk out, you're walking out into lunch. Food is ready. But before we go, I want to identify Bembosa. Please, can you stand up? We, uh, we cannot, we, we have many distinguished people here, and if I don't recognize you, it doesn't mean that I'm slighting you. Bembosa has a, 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 a big job, but, uh, but from his salary, from his meager salary, let me put it in. <laughs> <laughs> he, he started a publishing house of his own. And um, he put out um, 100 and 100 Nigerians. It's, it's a very beautiful, fine book. And recently he released this book, uh, Tributes to Chino Achebe, uh, which he released. I think you should, if you've seen it, right? No. You can hold it, you can look at it. <laughs> 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 which is a very beautifully produced book. Uh, for those of you that are looking at it, you can keep them, you can have them. That's just your dog. <laughs> so, uh, we have to support him uh, in whatever ways we can. And he's forthcoming with a major book, African Women. Nigerian Women. Nigerian Women. It's a very cluster of women who are artists. And um, I've seen some of them, um, what is putting together, and they are very incredible. The, the thing we have to do for a person like him who does it, what in his garage, in his house, is to, is to use them as test books, and um, when we're going back home, buy copies from him, because he's not doing it for profit. He's just into publishing uh, to advance and um, Oh, I need collective interest. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ninety seconds. Ninety seconds. You want to eat? No. <laughs> um, I'm not an artist. I'm not a historian. I'm not an arts historian. Um, but um, I'm here today because I respect the man being honoured, and I respect our convener today. Um, I've not met him before. Face to face, we've been talking on the telephone, exchanging emails, and everything everybody has said about his generosity is true, hundred percent. I am, I am glad to be here. I am an engineer by training, but I'm enjoying the conversation going on, and I think um, conferences of this nature, conferences of this nature, is very very important as we not only advance ourselves, <coughs> but as we seek to make changes in Nigeria. That's all I have to say. Thank you for inviting me. So let's come back here. So we are fine with that. <laughs> 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 Thank you. 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 Thank